Hi friends, it's Andrea, and welcome back to another journal with me video. Today we're going to be setting up my December bullet journal spread, and some other pages that go alongside it. I've been using bullet journaling as a method to help me get through this pandemic and quarantine time over the past couple of months after my friend Nora introduced me to how much it had helped her with her life and organizing her thoughts. The spreads you're seeing today are definitely inspired by her spreads that she shared with me because I really loved how minimal they were and to the point. I know a lot of people bullet journal with a lot of creative illustrations and fun stuff like that but I feel like in order for me to stay committed to this I had to make sure it was as simple as possible and while I have not been perfect by any means and fallen off the wagon numerous times it really has been so beneficial to me when I have done it to start off I carve out a moment before the beginning of the month and I sit with myself and reflect on the month prior, write a reflection. In this case, I had not done my bullet journal. I had not sat with myself last month at all because I was going through something and I didn't want to face reality. So here I am just sort of starting off with my month at a glance spread, which is basically just a calendar, an overview of everything going on that month. You can customize this however you like. I like it to be super simple, like any other calendar you'd find in any other planner. And I just write the days of the week across the top, and then the numbers of the days in the corner of each little box that's made. And I find this is a great way for me to quickly look at the days and, and hold myself accountable for deadlines that are coming up. So after I create my little spread, I start filling it in with any really important dates that I have to be aware of. And even over the course of the month, as dates keep coming, I'll fill them in as they come. Another thing that I like to do is set an intention for the month in the form of a word. And so my word of the month for December is strong. And underneath that, sometimes I like to put a little quote. This time I was inspired by something I saw on the app called The Pattern that I downloaded this year and have been obsessed with. And that quote is, your destiny is to embrace your confidence and innate power other side of the calendar i like to put little reminders things like pay credit card and i find that repeating this process of writing it down over and over again really solidifies it in my mind at the start of each month i also like to do a prompt in relation to that intention of the month last month or not last month i think this was a few months ago my intention was to really figure out what my boundaries were so I wanted to do an exercise surrounding boundaries and this month I thought I would make that monthly prompt about letting go because currently I'm trying to move on from some a couple of things in my life and it's really hard especially <laughs> being stuck or feeling stuck in this quarantine and so I'll write myself a little question or something and kind of figure out this prompt as I go. But in case you want to use this, I ask the question, how do we move on from something or someone that we love without leaving behind a piece of ourselves in the process? And this is inspired by some things I've done with the magazine in the past and some other themes we've, we've had in the magazine. And I usually then go back to that a little bit later if I'm not sure about what I'm wanting the prompt to be move on to the next page and the next page is sort of my tasks at a glance of what I have to do th this month sort of non-negotiables and really really important things that I hope to get done that month and basically you write them out in a little list like I'm doing right here 
and be as simple as possible. I like to keep my more work-oriented and personal goals kind of separate, just divided by the page. Uh, and then I like to add a little box with uh, books that I want to read that month, just to keep that on the top of my head and encourage me to continue to read. I'm going to take a brief pause here to chat a little bit about the sponsor of today's video. I'm so excited to be partnering with Skillshare because I'm actually a huge fan of the platform. This is the first time in my life that, as far as I know, I'm not returning to school. So it was really important for me to continue the learning process and Skillshare has honestly really helped me with that. If you don't know of them already, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative people. You can develop your existing skills and passions or explore new ones. Their classes range from creative writing to photography to marketing to music to illustration, web development, and even bullet journaling. I really enjoyed the class by Amanda Rach Lee, The Ultimate Guide to Creative Planning and Journaling. She shares some really awesome insights into why she bullet journals and how she bullet journals really effectively. I also really love this class by Yasmin Cheyenne. She is a writer, speaker, self-healing advocate, and also an Air Force veteran, which is really cool. And her class is called Writing for Self-Discovery, Six Journaling Prompts for Gratitude and Growth. She has a really realistic approach to self-care and to journaling in your day-to-day -day life. And that perspective was really helpful to me in accepting that I was making mistakes and allowing myself to do so. Another thing I really love about Skillshare is that there are no ads and it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. As my little holiday gift to you all, the first thousand of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of a Skillshare premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Now, back to my journal spreads. This month, I decided to try to recreate a habit tracker that I did one month that clearly, as you can see, failed very badly and I barely filled in any of the boxes but I still think that it was beneficial for me to write out all of those goals that I had and it really is probably my favorite part of bullet journaling to kind of set up these little trackers and things because it's so therapeutic to make all these lines sometimes if you miss a day it can feel kind of discouraging but having this tracker for me was really important with accountability and helping myself understand what was possible for me to do in a month and what wasn't. I find that I'm a very ambitious person when it comes to trying to create self-improvement goals. I used to put way too many habits to track. Now I think I'm trying to stick to only a few that are very closely related to each other. I also included a little spot at the bottom where I have a weekly habit tracker of a few things that I want to do per week. The next page is probably one of my favorites and it's the gratitude page. I put numbers 1 through 30 or 31st on the page and then every single morning I will write down a sentence of something that I'm grateful for and it actually turns out really awesome when you start to fill them out. I've never filled out a full page before but I have filled out like a large chunk of a page and it's just so wonderful to flip back and have this entire page of things that you're grateful for. It really puts things into perspective and makes you feel more positive. I really want to try to start having a moment on Sundays where I recharge and I reflect on the week prior in order to help me with the week ahead. And I think this spread will really help me with that. It's a week at a glance and basically I'm going to be transferring over any important dates from my month at a glance to see it at a little bit more of a closer scale and any other little tasks or meetings that I'm going to be having that week. And on the other column, I like to write an intention for the week that is of course related to the intention for the month, but I think that for me, being intentional is being very specific 
and that's a huge part of why I wanted to start bullet journaling was so that I could be present and intentional with myself about what it is that I wanted to do and what I wanted to accomplish. The intention I wrote down for this week, for the first week of December, is find strength in this time alone and channel your connection that you're building with yourself into your work. And beneath that, I like to write down my objectives for the week, transferring them over again from the previous page of my objectives for the month, and kind of breaking them down into more specific tasks on how to reach those larger objectives that I had for the month. For one month, I decided to do a mood tracker and try to write down a little point of of the books that I was reading each day, but I didn't really keep up with it. And because I'm just starting to get back on my feet with bullet journaling again, I decided to omit it from December. Instead, I just sort of set up a template for the first day of December so that I would be ready. So I put the date at the top in a very simplistic way. And then on the second column, I put my daily intention. So I have a weekly intention and then I have a daily intention and then some other little points like how many bottles of water I want to drink and who I need to contact that day. And I also like to learn one French word each day. If you don't know how bullet journaling works, basically I'll just write down my really important tasks for the day. Sometimes I'll be super detailed, sometimes I'll be pretty generic. Um, And then you just X off the tasks that you've completed and then put an arrow on the ones that you want to move over to the next day. And you do that every day. And I find that's really helpful to me because over time you start to notice that there are certain tasks that keep being migrated or keep being moved. And you have to get to a point where you sit with yourself and ask why are those tasks not getting done and why are you not prioritizing those tasks are they not important enough and do they need to be just crossed off the list altogether or is there some way that you can move them to be a top priority so at this point i'm going back to my monthly prompt about letting go and i scoured the internet for exercises about letting things go and i saw this really great one where you just have a circle with what do i need to let go of and then lines and sentences going outwards from the circle so you're kind of pushing those away from yourself and letting them go and i really love visual diagrams so this is very helpful to me and also kind of a little bit of creativity to add to my boring journal i wrote down things like my need to feel desired or validated by someone romantic dissatisfaction with my body, the thought of everything having to go my way, negative self-talk, emotional connection to food and eating, people, relationships, and friendships that no longer serve me, anger, and jealousy and comparison. I also ended up writing a little bit of a journal entry that I'm not going to share because it's a little bit personal, but... I like to make sure that I'm super flexible with these kinds of pages, depending on how I'm feeling in the moment and what I want to reflect on. So yeah. And that is my bullet journal setup for December. Here are all the pages one more time. I have my calendar month at a glance with all my tasks and dates. I had my monthly prompt to set my intention for the month and then my monthly tasks. And then I have my habit tracker, which I'm excited to hopefully fill out. And then following that, I have the gratitude page, which I'm going to add a gratitude to every single day. And then I have my week at a glance, and then my day at a glance. And yeah, that is my bullet journal set up for December. And let me know if this was helpful, if you'd like to see more.